guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Soft Glam palette that Anastasia just came out with and I'm really excited to jump into this video because I have a lot of opinions on this. This palette leaked on Instagram about a month ago um, and it's the same thing that happened with the Subculture palette. It got leaked early and something that I noticed, I don't know if this is a correlation or not, uh, but this palette was not released at Sephora, whereas the other two palettes in this line or collection, I guess you could say, which are the Subculture and the Modern Renaissance palette, are both available at Sephora. So part of me wonders if somebody on the Sephora team was the one who leaked this and the Subculture palette, and that's why it's not being released at Sephora. I don't know exactly what happened, but it seems like there is some major drama going on. This is the palette itself. It has that beautiful suede velvety cover that the Anastasia palettes have and it's in a really pretty camel color. And inside there are 14 shades. And the reason I was so interested in purchasing this palette right when it came out, other than to do a review for you guys because I got your back, is because I think in general the Anastasia palettes are a really good value. And I know what you're going to say, it's definitely not like a $5 Wet n Wild palette. It is $42, which is a little bit pricey. But the reason that I say that it's affordable is because it actually has 14 shades. So per eyeshadow pan, it's actually a much lower price than some of the other eyeshadow palettes I reviewed, um, like the Becca Ocean Jewels one. And because there are so many shades, you can really create a lot of looks with this. However, there are also definitely some downsides to this palette and it is not the easiest thing in the world to use. So if you're interested to see what I mean and see how this palette applies and hear my opinion on it, then go ahead and keep watching. Tempura is a barely there cool tone nude. Glistening is a shimmery champagne shade. Orange soda is a very light orange color. Rose pink is a foiled shade and it's a dusty rose color. Sultry is also a foiled shade and that's a pink toned brown. Bronze is pretty self-explanatory, it's bronze. <laughs> Mulberry is a red toned brown and is a lot darker than it looks in the pan. Dusty Rose is a Dusty Rose. Fairy is a light tone gold shimmer shade. Burnt Orange is very similar to Orange Soda, but just a deeper tone. Sienna is a brick red. Rustic is a classic dark brown. Cypress Umber is a cool toned, very dark brown. And Noir is black. So when I swatched these, a couple of things that I noticed, first of all, they're very pigmented. Tempura didn't look as pigmented on me, but it's just because I'm pale, so it blends in with my skin. But you can see all of the rest of them are really, really pigmented. A common complaint with the Anastasia palettes is that they're very loosely packed in the pan and so they cause a lot of fallout and while I didn't see that on the matte shades the foiled shades do have a lot of fallout when you swatch them this doesn't mean that it's a bad quality palette though it just means that you need to have a much lighter hand when you're diving into it with a brush which also means that your product will last longer but I do recommend shadow shields or waiting to do your concealer until after you're done doing your eyeshadow see if you can see uh, this color right here that is sultry um, I wiped off the part that looks like fallout on it and I can get like almost another whole swatch out of that. Yeah, so the uh, foiled shades, you you do experience quite a bit of fallout. Oh, they are beautiful though, aren't they? Something else that I noticed um, with this palette is it has a lot of very similar shades. Glistening Bronze and Fairy are all very much in the same color family, and Mulberry and Cypress Umber are actually also very similar. Also, there are a few shades in this palette that Anastasia also sells as singles, so they're not all new shadow shades, but Anastasia has done that with all of their products, I think. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off. All right, so as usual with my palette reviews and first impressions, I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush that is given with the palette. I actually think Anastasia does some really nice brushes with their palette. I think I wanna do a matte like red, orange, and brown eye for this because there are so many of those colors in this palette. So I'm just gonna start off with orange soda, very light-handedly dipping into it because they do have some fallout. This is a really pretty transition shade. This is a shade that they have as a single as well, I believe. Okay, so this brush is definitely like scratching my eye a little bit, which I'm not a huge fan of. And then using the smaller side, I'm gonna dip into burnt orange a little bit um, and also use that in the crease. There we go, that just deepens that really nicely. Orange soda is a pretty shade, but with this brush, it is kind of hard to apply because you wanna use a little bit more so it's a little bit more pigmented but then the more you use the brush, the more it like scratches your eyelid. This side is really nice though. I really like, this would be a great um, smudge brush. All right, and then before I go on with any deeper colors, I'm gonna use that really light color tempura. Ooh yeah, it is definitely uh, loosely packed in there. Oh yeah, I can tell now on my eye, that's a really pigmented shadow. I just couldn't tell on my arm because I'm really, really pale. I think that to blend the edges out a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna mix Sienna and Rustic. 
And I'm gonna start trying to really define the crease area here. I might do a cut crease. The trick with this palette is you really can't dip in too hard. You have to be very, very light with it. It is definitely the same shadow formulation. There's no doubt about that. So if you didn't like the subculture palette, you will not like this. But if you did like the subculture palette, this palette is really beautiful so far. What I love about this palette is it's very like, it's a perfect combination of like a neutral palette and a very like pinky palette, which is exactly what I use. And I think you could really make this work all year long. You have some very springy shades, but you also have some shades that would be perfect in autumn and winter. I will say because these darker shades are so pigmented, you really have to work to blend them out. You really have to work to blend them out. I'm just kind of dragging tempura um, up onto underneath my brows as a highlight as well while I'm doing this. I'm already using it to blend out, so I might as well. So I have some excess of Sienna and Rustic on the small side of my brush right now, and normally I would change brushes, but since I'm trying to show you guys um, what this palette is like just out of the box using the brush that they give you um, in order to wipe it off, I'm just uh, blending it underneath my eyes. I'm going to be really ambitious here and do like a really dramatic dark eye. And for this one, I do have to use an outside brush. I'm just using this flat shader brush from uh, Matto. I'm taking Sultry, which is the shade that had the most fallout. And we're going to see how this does. All right. So yeah, major fallout. Woo! Glitter is so chunky. I got it in my eye. Ouch. Wipe away this fallout here. Shadows are so soft that when you, even with a brush, you try to wipe them away, they kind of just like smear. All right, I'm gonna take glistening on my pinky in my inner corner. All right, I'm gonna pop on some eyeliner and mascara and I will come back to you guys with my final thoughts. So this is what the finished look looks like. My final thoughts on this palette are that it's okay. I'd give it like a three out of five, I think, which is not to say that I'm neutral about it because I'm not. I have very strong opinions either way. The shadows are very pigmented and I like the general color palette. However, I feel like some of the shades are too similar and the fallout problem that people had with subculture is still an issue here. If you are a true Anastasia lover and you know how to work with their shadows, I would say go ahead and give this a go because the colors are really pretty and overall I do like it. But if you're just starting out, this is not a good first eyeshadow palette at all. I am really looking forward to creating more looks with this in the future as I get to know the colors and what blends together a little bit better. So if you guys wanna see another video with this palette once I get to know it a little bit better, please let me know and I'll definitely do that. I'll play around with it a little bit and see what I can come up with. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comments down below if you got this palette and if so, what you thought of it, if you loved it, if you hated it, if you kind of loved and hated it like me. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and turn on your notifications so you don't miss when I post. I hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you are and I'll see you with my next video. Bye.